in the voices in praise. Let all the world in every corner sing. Thank you. 
worship to you. Yes. But although we come to you this morning shouting your praise to God, we are ever conscious that we are not really worthy, O oh God, to have your love because we are sinners. We have seen that we continue to sin in thought and word and deed. We continue to sin when we do not love our neighbors as ourselves. When we think even that you are only our God and not any other, other person's God. So when persons are in need, we just ignore them. Father God, we sin, oh God, when we become anxious, are worried, are fearful. When we forget, oh God, as Christians, that we serve a faithful God. When we forget, oh God, that we are stewards in your kingdom and all that we have belong to you. And so we do not give you enough of our time, our talents, or our treasures. Forgive us all, oh God, all these things. And oh God, we know that because you are a loving and merciful God, that indeed you have already forgiven us even before we, we, we begin to sin in, in so many thoughtless ways, oh God. Because, oh God, it is the reason why you came in Jesus. And a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the birth of your son. In that first advent, oh God, when he came to bring peace on earth and goodwill to our men. And it is because of that, oh God, we have the opportunity no man by no man, minute by minute, oh God, to come to your throne of grace to ask for your forgiveness. And we are sure this morning, oh God, that you have forgiven us our sins. And we are eternal grateful, oh God. We are thankful, oh God, for your mercies every day, which are new. We are thankful, oh God, that we need not worry or fear because you are ever present. We are thankful, O oh God, that you have called us to serve you in the newness of our life. We are thankful, O oh God, that you are God of the mountain as well as the God in the valley. And we are thankful, O oh God, that when we go through the changing scenes of life, O oh God, in trouble and in joy, we can still see your presence. And so, God, we are thankful this morning that we are witnesses to your great love. And we thank you, O oh God. And so, oh God, we pray, O oh God, that as we go through this act of worship, that indeed some souls will be saved. That indeed those of us who need to be renewed in you will be bold enough to say in our hearts, O oh God, Father, forgive me. Father, remove obstacles from me. Father, I am yours, O oh God, as well. Because you have said that you are mine. And so God, we thank you for reminding us this morning of who we are in you because you are indeed our loving parent. You are indeed the, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And you are indeed the one we can call Abba Father. So take these, our prayers and praise, O God, unto you, O God, and bless them in us. As we continue with this journey called us. And we pray and give you thanks, O God, in and through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Redeemer, Savior, and soon coming King. Amen and Amen. amen. To all of you who are worshiping with us this morning. On this second day of worship with the South Caribbean District Council, our theme this morning is resetting our physical and mental life for renewal. It is our prayer that you will be indeed reset, be reset, that you will indeed feel renewed and energized, that you can. Carry on whatever work has begun in you and whatever work you have been doing. And we pray that as you worship with us, the Grenada Circuit, that indeed this worship experience this morning will be a full blessing to you. We now invite you to join us in the time of praise. You can dance, you can stamp your feet, you can clap because we serve a wonderful God. And we are always inviting to sing our praises to him. 
So we now go into a time of praise. Please join us. chapter 14 verse 30 and 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30. A tranquil mind gives life to the flesh but passion makes the bones rot. 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. As we prepare our hearts for the spoken word, we sing the hymn, Wonderful Words of Life.
peace to all wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. We now invite you to open your hearts as you obey God's spoken word through his humble servant, Reverend Silbert Prescott. As I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning I would like to share with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. Let us pray. Word who took on flesh and lived among us. We ask that as you speak to us in this moment, that you will open us to your creative presence, that through in the power of your Holy Spirit, you may transform and renew us. So speak to me and speak to me, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord of strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Resetting our spiritual, our physical, and mental lives for renewal. Every once in a while, I find myself having to adjust my watch. When I first got it, it kept perfectly abreast with the minute by minute passage of each day. But as time progressed, it lost its consistency. For some reason, it would either be moving faster or slower than it should. Hence, it needed resetting. As is the case with my watch, so it is with our walk with God at time. Indeed, there are moments when a life that was once in harmony with God's will goes badly awry. And it is at such moments that we stop, think, and do a resetting. In this recognition, our conference have chosen the team Reset to guide our worship as we engage in this year's district council. Yesterday, we were led through reflections on how to reset our lives spiritually. And today, we will continue that theme as we reflect on resetting our physical and mental lives for renewal. The text that is selected to guide our reflection today is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. And this, these verses form part of a larger context where the Apostle Paul is calling the Corinthian church to do some serious soul searching in order that they might adjust their lives to match the Christian values that he had taught them. You see, brothers and sisters, under Paul, the church at Corinth had started well. Many of the people in that city had responded to his call to forsake a culture of immorality and corruption for a life in Christ. However, a couple of years after Paul had departed, the disturbing news came to his ears that strife and division had crept in and were negatively affecting that small church. Some had become spiritually arrogant, leading to further problems such as sexual misconduct, wrongs against other believers, abuse of spiritual gifts, and misunderstanding of their Christian teachings. And so Paul writes this letter seeking to restore the spiritual and moral integrity of the church. 
In chapter 6, he addresses two main issues. Where he is outraged firstly at one member of the church who had taken another to court over trivial matters that could have been settled among the body of Christ. As well as warning believers to cease participating in sexual immorality. After addressing these issues, Paul closes by urging or by using the image of the temple to help believers to understand the behavioral standards that were expected of them as Christians. In verse 21, he exhorts them, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you who are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Friends, Paul understands what the temple represents, and he uses that picture to, to, to teach the Christians what their Christian identity looks like. And so after reflecting on this text, I would like to suggest three features of the temple that we can consider as we seek to reset our spiritual and mental lives for renewal. Namely, that the temple is a holy place, a place of sacrifice, and a place where God is glorified. Let us take a moment to reflect on this. Firstly, when Paul writes, inviting the believers at Corinth to see themselves as a temple, he is inviting them to regard their bodies and minds as something that was holy. When you think of the word, the, the word holiness, we usually associate it with moral excellence. But the original meaning of the word has to do with separateness. To set aside or to separate oneself for a specific purpose. For example, a person or thing was said to be holy because it had been set apart for a sacred or special purpose. It was not to be put to common or ordinary use. In 1 Kings chapter 7, for example, we read of several articles in the temple that were made of gold, like the altar the table of the showbread, the lampstand, the basins, the trimmers, and the censers. These were all made of pure gold. Why? Because gold had been regarded as something that was very precious. In the Bible, gold is often used as an ember blend of what is pure, what is divine, what is precious, and what is lasting. In the tabernacle also, the Holy of Holies was especially a designated room where only the high priest could enter because God's presence was there. It was so holy that no ordinary person could go there. And so, when Paul writes, when Paul invites the believers of Corinth to think of their bodies as the temple of the Holy Spirit, he wants them to regard themselves as being set apart for God. Because the Holy Spirit resides within their bodies, it was sacred. Seeing themselves that way would move them to amend their thoughts and behavior to reflect Christ-likeness. They would be careful not to abuse their bodies, what they feed their minds with, and how they could reflect God's holy character. In the same way, we too are challenged by Paul's image to think of our bodies and minds as holy, and in so doing, be mindful of how we care for ourselves, the kind of activities that we engage in, what we read, how we make time for adequate rest and reflection, how we live safely, especially in these covid times. You see, brothers and sisters, the fast-paced world in which we live lulls us into, into so many activities 
that it distorts our image of who we are. That from time to time, brothers and sisters, we need to slow down, we need to reset our physical and our mental beings in line with God's purpose for us. In Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 9, the apostle reminds believers who they are when he writes. He says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And so, brothers and sisters, the call to reset our physical and mental lives for renewal is a call to self-examination. It is a call to think of what adjustments we need to make in our lives in order that our character can harmonize with what is befitting of people that are set apart for God's will and God's purpose for us. Yes, brothers and sisters, through the image of the temple, Paul reminds us that we are holy that, and that our lives must reflect that holiness. Secondly, brothers and sisters, the image of the temple invites us to consider what sacrifices we are called to make, that our lives would be pleasing to the God who calls us. In the Old Testament, the temple was a place where sacrifices were made to God. People brought their very best or the very best of their first fruits and animals to offer them as sacrifices to God. In Romans 12 verse 1, Paul urges the Christians at Rome to think of their lives in this way. He says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice acceptable to God. In other words, they were to regard their bodies in the way and their lives in the same way that they regard offering sacrifices to God. When Paul uses the image of the temple, therefore, as a metaphor for the body of the believers, he invites us to think of the, what the temple represents and to use that understanding to guide the way that we live. As indicated earlier, Paul was as upset that the believers were using lawsuits to resolve matters that should have been better handled in brotherly and sisterly love. In verse 9 to 11, for example, Paul goes on to list a number of transgressions that the believers were making. They were practicing fornication, idolatry, prostitution, robbery, revelry, and many other things. And so he reminds them that as individuals joined to Christ through his death and resurrection, that their bodies were members of part of Christ. Therefore, as part of Christ, the passion and desires that once characterized their lives needed to be rooted out. In Romans chapter 8, verse 13 to 15, Paul gives us a likely reason. He says, Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For you who are led by the Spirit are children of God. You see, friends, when Paul met Christ on the Damascus road, he discovered what it meant to die to selfish ambitions. And that is why he was able to live the sin. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ who lives within me. Yes, friends, to think of the temple as a place of sacrifice is to bring our minds and our bodies the things that we and to reflect on the things that we need to die to and to lay them all on God's altar of sacrifice. But Hoffa correctly puts it this way, he says, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. And so brothers and sisters, 
as we consider Paul's words that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, as we contemplate what it might mean for us as we seek to reset our spiritual and mental lives for renewal, let us bring all our thoughts and our action, our ways of being that are out of harmony with what is expected as children of God. And let us lay them on God's altar of sacrifice. As Elijah often asks us to do, he says, Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your spirit, heart that the Spirit control, you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield Him, your body and soul. Let us yield our body, our mind and soul to God as living sacrifices to him. Thirdly, brothers and sisters, Paul's invitation for believers to see themselves as the temple of the Holy Spirit is an opportunity for us to think of how we can glorify God in our living. In fact, this is exactly what Paul says in verse 20. He says, For you who are born with a Christ, Therefore, glorify God in your body. What does glorifying God in your body mean? You see, friends, the word glory or glory is an important theological concept that is associated with the very being of God. In Greek, it is the word doxa, which denotes honor, renown, value, or majesty and is usually associated with divine quality. In Hebrew, the word is kavod, which gives an idea or the idea of importance, heaviness, brilliance, splendor, or magnificence. It is the Shekinah glory that filled the tabernacle as Moses erected it. It represents the brilliance of God's presence that inspired all and reverence. In Exodus 24 and 33, we read that after Moses had spent time in God's presence, that his face shone so brightly that he had to put a veil on it. Paul picks up this idea in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, as he declares to the believers the boldness, the transforming work of the Holy Spirit enables them to have. In verse 18 he writes, All of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed in the same image from one degree of glory into another. So, in exhorting believers to glorify God in their bodies, Paul is inviting them and us to think of how we can use our lives as, as instruments of God, how we can glorify God in the way that we use the physical and mental parts of our being. How in our relationships and our encounters with others, our lives can bear witness of that beauty of Jesus which each of us needs to demonstrate. How we can be a light in the darkness for others a source of encouragement to the sad and the lonely, how we can bring rescue to the perishing and care for those persons who are experiencing death. Yes, friends, Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 reminds believers of who they are. He says, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. So let your light so shine before others, that they may see your good work, and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes, brothers and sisters, especially in these unprecedented times, we are all to consider how we can individually and collectively reset our spiritual and mental lives. For we know. But also, we are challenged to reflect on how we can reshape the ministries of our church 
in order that we can be agents of healing and renewal in this world in which we live. In other words, we are challenged to think about how we can bear witness in our lives for Christ. Christ is promised to the church in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is that when the Holy Spirit empowers us, He empowers us to be witnesses. Witnessing, brothers and sisters, will not be something that we do just occasionally, but rather witnessing is something that we are, our very being, our very culture and character. Therefore, brothers and sisters, one way we glorify God in our bodies is to do as Ben Campbell challenges us when he says, try a little kindness, show a little kindness, shine your light for everyone to see. And when you try a little kindness, it will open up the blindness of the narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded street. Brothers and sisters, when Paul shows us the image of the temple in this passage, as a picture of what believers ought to be. He is inviting us to see ourselves as holy people called out and set apart by God to embrace God's holy character in our body and in our mind. He is inviting us to a time of self-examination where we allow God's plumb line to be held up against our lives in order that the relevant adjustments can be made. He is inviting us to consider how we can use our minds and our bodies and our entire lives in order to glorify God. Paul puts it nicely in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 3, when he says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present your bodies to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your true devotion. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by your mind, and I add by your body as well. And so, brothers and sisters, as we seek to reset our physical and mental lives for renewal, let us allow the power and presence of God. Let us allow Paul's image of the temple to shape the, our thinking and our acting and our living, so that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, they continue to transform and make us into the person who He created us to be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you so troubled inside? Oh, put your hope in our God. Yes, God is our help. Oh, sing praises to our living God. We sing our hymn of response, hymn 264, in the voices in praise, the thirsty day.
before you this morning to acknowledge me and to pray for those of our nation and our world. This morning, O God, we lift up the Methodist Church, dear God. We pray, O God, for those that are him. Lord, we pray especially for our Bishop Edward Gladwell and the office staff. We ask, O God, that you will give them the knowledge, the understanding, O God, as they direct and they give decisions, O God. And then when it comes down and it's filtered down to the rest of the third Caribbean district, O God, that it will be clear, Lord, and that members, O God, and the district, O God, will be able to understand and follow, O God, with your decisions and what you, O Lord, want for us in this South Caribbean district. We pray, O merciful Father, for our Bishop Derek Richards and Reverend S. Silver and Reverend S. Dwayne. We ask, O God, that you guide them as this conference, this council, is in process. We ask, O God, that you keep them in the knowledge, give them creative and innovative ways, O God, to bring your word, to bring your message, O God, so that we'll chart the way forward, O God, for 2022 and beyond. Father God, we pray for all our superintendent ministers, all our lay pastors, all our, o God, our youth pastors, O God, Lord, the various commissions, the MCCA Women's Commission, O God, the District MCCA Men's Commission, and all the youth, men, youth and young adults district commission. We ask of God that you touch them, that you equip them of God. We pray for them individually and collectively, O God, as a body and as a district of God. We ask of God for a special anointing yes. at this conference, dear Jesus. We pray, O God, that your Holy Spirit will move mightily yes. in this conference or council. Yes. Lord God, we ask of God to touch lives, yes. that the various positions that they have taken up, O God, that it will bear fruits, O God, that the seed they sow, O God, will bear fruits, Lord, and the fruits will germinate, yes. the seed will germinate, and the fruit will go out wide into the, into the world, and especially in the district, O God. We ask for a special anointing, O God. Yes. Move mighty there, Jesus. Move mighty there, God. We pray, O oh God, that you will touch, O oh God, and you are mounting, Lord, a revival of, O oh God, of Methodist Church, dear God. We have seen, O oh God, what is in folly, but you will never let it die. So, God, rise up men and women, and they will serve you, dear God. They will serve you earnestly and honestly, O oh God, and that your spirit will fill them, O oh God. That their faith will not be with us, but they will go from strength to strength in serving you, dear Jesus. Holy Father, we pray, O oh God, for our various islands of God in the South Caribbean district. We pray, O oh God, that as we go through this pandemic, O oh God, that we will realize, O oh God, that you are the mighty healer. You are the great physician. Lord, and if we put our faith and trust in you, O oh God, you will just come and do what you alone can do. You will heal our nation, bless our land. Heal us, Emmanuel. Heal us, O oh God. Father God, heal us. Heal this land, dear Jesus. Gracious God. We ask, O oh God, that you come in, intervene in the situation, O oh God. Lord, the coronavirus has caused panic, has caused over oh destruction of lives, of homes, of economic and financial, over oh things in our country and in our homes. We pray especially, O oh God, for those who have lost jobs. We ask, O oh God, that they will find over oh innovative ways, that they will, not, they will dispel doubt and fear and trust in you, O oh God. Put their hope and trust in you. Knowing, O oh God, that you are the master of everything. So, Father God, we will lift up our young people before you this, hour, this morning, dear Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that they will come before you. Those who have accepted, O oh God, you as Lord and Savior, that they will continue, O oh God, that the devil will not find any place to drag them up, but you, O oh God, will help them. Father, we pray for love in our yeah. various congregations and in our district and in a circuit here, God, for love with our brothers and sisters, so that they will know that you are alive, that our words and our actions, O oh God, will go hand in hand. Father, God, we Oh God, we pray for our frontline workers, dear God. 
those who have been out there, the doctors and the nurses, over the health officials of our, who are there planning over to the men and women who come over and be healed. Not that they, they will not find fear and frustration, but oh God, they will know that you are loving God. You are a mighty God. You are a wonderful God. And so, Father, we bring them before you. We pray, oh God, for all of us, oh God, who are there in this land, oh God. We know, we know, only you alone know them. And we ask, oh God, for your divine intervention, oh God, your divine interpretation to us. We will be able to interpret, oh God, decipher what you want us to do, not what we want, but what you, oh God, you as a head of the church, oh God, will filter down, oh God, everything to us, oh God. But that the people of God will be able to know that you are a living God. Yeah. You are a living God. And with you, all things are possible. We pray over for our children and young people. Yeah. We ask, oh God, that you touch them, they God. We ask, oh God, that you fill their hearts, oh God, with love and peace. Lord, we pray, God, that you, oh God, as you go to school, oh God, and touch your institutions, God. We know, oh God, what the and then it is to the COVID and coronavirus system. But oh God, we know that oh God, you will keep them, the teachers, the principals, oh God, that you will keep them with the knowledge and the love as they impact knowledge and education to our nation's children. So Father God, we just ask your divine intervention, Lord, in this pandemic, over the world, oh God, right over the world, and especially in our South Carolina ministry. We pray, O God, for the conference in the sea. And as they go forward, O God, that your Holy Spirit will be right there, O God, and that no disturbance will come and take over. But you will be there with them to the end until, O God, the new church here, O God. So all the programs and plans that they have made will be implemented, O God. And that you will help, O God, then the superintendents and all the pastors as they come over to the various congregations and circuits that will bring clarity to what we don't understand of them and give them a new vision, give them that enthusiasm of God to serve, to serve you and to serve your people. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Now join in putting the Lord's Prayer together. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, heaven. heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth Lord, as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, for our Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and friends of our hour of worship this morning has now come and is now drawing to an end. But our service to God either begins or continues. We stand as we sing our closing hymn, I am thy, O Lord, in number 223 in the VIP. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul wake up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine.
My brothers and sisters, please receive the benediction. Go now, and may the Holy Spirit shed his light upon you. And may that Christ, who sacrificed himself for us, continue to save you. And may the Holy Spirit, who enables us to live as witnesses for Christ, continue to keep company with you. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.